Google just recently announced interaction to Next Paint as a new core web vital. And if you kind of read through the details, they talk about how this is supposed to assess page responsiveness using blah, blah, blah. And it talks a lot about the browser presenting visual feedback. But this is really confusing because I haven't found this to be true or representative of how IMP actually works. Here's a quick example. So I have a locally running application that has a four second delay when I actually run the subscribe for this newsletter. I don't show any user feedback at all and I have that delay on the back end to make sure this is a pretty poor experience. So if I run this with my email and press enter, nothing happens for four seconds or so and then eventually I'll get feedback that says that email already exists. So that is a terrible user experience, but if we look inside of the Web Vitals extension inside of Chrome, you can see my IMP is 64 milliseconds, which is still really good. And that obviously should not be the case if IMP is meant to track user feedback to their actions or interactions on the page. Now, I was really confused by this, and I even deployed an application and tested this in Century and got the same type of thing. So over the course of several days, I deployed an app to Century, which is a partner that I've been working with, and I was testing out their new IMP functionality. And you can see I was still getting really good IMP, even though I had a terrible user experience. So what is the secret to how this works? Well, let's start by taking an example of the code that I have here. And I'll tell you the little secret that Google doesn't really clarify that does affect your IMP. So I have a subscriber form and I have a piece of code here that I'll add back in a second. But this code makes an asynchronous API request to the backend using server actions in Next.js. So server actions allow me to just call a function that runs on the server, but basically it's making an HTTP request. So we make that call to the subscriber subscribe, and it does some things in here to actually handle subscribe. The big thing that it does right now is actually wait four seconds. So from the front end, we're making a request to our backend. That backend will wait four seconds before it actually does the work and then return. And when it returns, we actually uh, show the error, which is where we see this email has already been used. So although you would think this would trigger a poor user experience and it would definitively trigger a poor INP, what Google doesn't tell you is that the INP is really only tracked with things that block the made thread. So what's an example of that? Well, if I have a handler for my function and inside of this, I run a bunch of code summing up all numbers for uh, zero up to 10 billion. Also, did you know the syntax was available in JavaScript with the underscores here? Anyway, so if we do that, all of this code is blocking the main thread. I can go into the subscribe server action. I can remove that delay there. But just by having this code that is actually going to prevent the main thread from rendering, it's going to trigger a poor IMP. We'll see this in a second, but the interesting thing is this is still a very poor user experience because I'm not providing any feedback to the user at all. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We have the same page. We now will submit the same thing. I press enter, hands off the keyboard. Nothing is happening. No user feedback is happening. And this is actually gonna take a little bit longer than the previous example, but eventually it'll come back and say the same error message where this user, this email has already existed. All right, so that finally came back. And now if we run the web vital again, we'll see this actually has a very poor experience. All right, so you can see now that it shows a 14,000 millisecond or 14 second IMP, which obviously is really horrible. So what's the key here? The key with the example before, before we added this delay, is that when we make this API request using the server action in Next.js, it's an asynchronous call. That means after it actually initiates this call to the backend, it's no longer blocking the main thread from being able to render any UI updates. What's interesting though, is Google talks about how we're, we're supposed to provide these updates to the user and provide visual feedback. Google actually doesn't care with IMP about visual feedback. What Google does care about with IMP is that the screen has the ability to render visual feedback if there is any. Remember, we had a good IMP score when we had a delay on the back end and no user feedback on the front end, but because we didn't block the main thread from actually rendering anything, the score was considered good, even though there was no user feedback at all. Now, I think this makes IMP look pretty weird in my opinion, as it doesn't really give a good metric of visual feedback. And I actually have a hard time understanding what the use case is. And I even asked on Twitter, you can go and check out the comments. If I wanted to potent to specifically block the main thread in JavaScript, how would you do it? I'd actually love to know your comments below, 
because almost everything we do in JavaScript is asynchronous. It either uses callbacks for user interactions or we make, for example, asynchronous API requests like I did here. Since that is asynchronous, it's not blocking the main thread, which isn't preventing it from rendering any UI changes, which then doesn't trigger any poor IMP scores. So in a lot of ways, I feel like this new IMP score is useless unless you actually have some long running, running code inside of here that does block the main thread. Now, in this case, this is just example code. It does the job, but I'm wondering what real world examples are that would block the main thread for some amount of time that you would have to pay attention to for your IMP. Now, all that said, even if IMP here is a little misleading, it is something that you need to pay attention to. So you can run the Web Vitals extension on your machine locally when you're in development to be able to test this. But if you want to be able to track this for a deployed application, you'll need to get something like Sentry that can actually track this as well. So you can see inside of the Web Vitals section, it has largest contentful paint, first contentful paint, IMP that we've been talking about cumulative layout shift and time to first byte. So these are all the web vitals that you need to keep track of. And the cool thing is you can actually track this based on different deployments or branches or environments that you're running in. So for me, I have Vercel test, Vercel preview, Vercel dev, I will have Vercel production, and then we have some other environments as well. So you can actually track all these statistics across your different environments to be able to see what the actual experience is like for your users based on your web vitals. Now, again, Sentry is a partner of mine that I've been collaborating with to be able to test out this new IMP feature. And that's how I found out the real details of how IMP works that Google doesn't do a very good job of explaining. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of the intricacies of how IMP scores are calculated and what you need to specifically pay attention to or not in your code. Let me know what you think about this new core web vital and if it accurately depicts a positive or negative user experience. I think it really doesn't, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.